Hello everyone, this is Gaurav from Automation Hacks and welcome to a new video in our series on Java on test automation. In today's video, we are going to take a look at Java 17 language features, touching upon sealed classes and a pseudo random generator. So let's get uh, started into it. What is sealed class? Now this is another language construct that Java introduced in version 17. Let's let's try to first understand, uh, you know, how we could potentially use something like a sealed class. So uh, you are all familiar with inheritance, right? It has been uh, there since many versions of Java and we use it heavily, though some might argue that composition is probably better than inheritance. Um, that's a debate for another day, though. Uh, so now, like, uh, how would you typically create like say an inheritance hierarchy right so assume we have a very familiar person class and a person can have say a couple of child classes like say an employee and a manager let's take a look at what employee is so employee extends person of course it has uh, an id and a department it has a constructor and just a getters for it right all right and what is a manager? A manager also is a child class of person and has a supervisor ID and a department. So while they both share a department, their IDs are kind of different. Uh, it's a trivial example just to make the point. Now, um, now what happens is this hierarchy is created once. And say as the person designing this inheritance hierarchy, you want to stop it at a certain point and you don't want to keep uh, the classes you know open so that people can keep on extending and creating child classes out of child classes leading to a very complex chain of uh, inheritance hierarchy which is very difficult to reason about uh, so for that specific purpose sealed classes uh, does give you a sort of control mechanism behind it and let's try to understand that so now uh, for any such class whatever is the base class i can add a sealed keyword uh, to it just to indicate that hey i will be you know sort of controlling the inheritance hierarchy more closely and let's uh, see what what it is all about in practice there are few rules around sealed classes so as i said sealed classes provide you control over inheritance hierarchy they can be either abstract or non-abstract there is no restriction to it and uh, now Java introduced, apart from sealed, another keyword called as non-sealed or final. And we'll see what, what it makes sense. The other thing is, uh, there is another keyword called as permits. So while creating a sealed class, you kind of explicitly define what will be the child classes, right? So I have given that, hey, this sealed class only allows couple of child classes here. So let's go to employee. Now say I am expecting employee class to still evolve further. I can define it as non-sealed. And what it means is that I can actually again extend employee and create another type of uh, employee. Uh, let's say it is a sales employee or an engineering employee or something like that. Say I want that kind of uh, modeling, right? And I want to keep the inheritance chain open. Then I use non-sealed. Now for manager, uh, I feel like it's a pretty well-defined uh, class and I will, no I will not want to create further child classes to it. Then I can define it as final. And what it means is beyond this class, no one can actually extend this class, right? So let's now bring it all together and see an actual motivating example just to understand this more. Also, before we go there, what would really be the benefit, right? So one is, of course, like security, wherein you kind of prevent uh, accidental misuse uh, since you don't allow any sort of unknown subclasses to be created. The other thing is, since your class hierarchy is pretty much uh, sealed uh, and there is a restriction there, your end-to-end -end tests will become much more self-explanatory because you can reason about the inheritance hierarchy uh, easily. And uh, yeah, I mean, like it, it simplifies things a lot. It's one of the features that is becoming more important with modern frameworks and everything. So let's see uh, an example here. I've tried to just create an object of employee or manager, like let's call it as John and Jane, uh, both in engineering departments and they have like an employee manager relationship. 
and now i can do some checks right like i can check that hey john should be an instance of person of course because it's a child class i can check that uh you know i can do a get id on john and i can check that hey it is whatever i defined similarly i can also check that jane is an instance of person and then uh, check whether the values are fine so very simple uh, sort of example in how you would actually deal with a class um, now what get id per uh, method actually is now this is kind of interesting uh, here so uh, i can pass it a person which is the base class uh, and then i can check that if this person is of type employee right then i can actually cast this person as an employee and get the id again uh, i can also check if this person is an instance of manager then i can get the supervisor id otherwise i'll return the id as zero so pretty simple way of actually working with it yeah and that's that sealed class with a very quick example um you can use it whenever you are creating say any sort of hierarchy in your framework and you want as the designer or the architect of this particular framework to make sure that you know people kind of work with well-defined interfaces and you can use it uh, however the need arises now let's move on and try to understand another very useful feature uh, that was introduced in java 17 which is a pseudo random generator test and now this is especially useful for uh, testing purpose because when you are testing you want a lot of random data to be generated for first testing or something like that so let's try to understand this uh, in a little bit more detail so uh, java 17 introduced you again a random generator how you work with it is it exposes a random generator factory and then you can provide it you know what kind of random generator you want so presently i am using a simple random uh, as one type of uh, you know random generator in future there might be more such uh, types introduced so there is extensibility for future as well i create an instance of uh, this particular random and then i'm just trying to uh, you know create multiple doubles which are random so i use doubles to define hey i want say 100 unique uh, double values and for each of these values i want to add them into a list and yeah i use uh, i use a very concise uh, syntax to directly access the add method as we saw earlier now uh, what can i do with that i can of course just try to stream through this uh, whatever i have added i can map it to string just to basically get uh, get it into a string format and demonstrate that indeed we got some uh, you know uh, that indeed we got some random double values out i use the collect and collectors uh, sort of method in my uh, simple stream expressions and i'm using collectors dot joining to make sure that for each of the values in this uh, list of double values i can convert it to string and then i can join them with a comma right and here i'm just checking that okay the size of this random doubles um, that was originally generated is indeed equal to 100 so let's just run this so you can see yeah they generated all these different uh, random values for us very useful whenever you are testing uh, especially useful if you are like sort of into first testing or if you want to use it for uh, some specific unit testing so yeah, definitely a very useful feature I introduced. And that's about it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you like this video and learn something new, please give it a like, uh, share it with your friends and a sub never hurts. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.